first mad man in it. Actually, my desire to uh, having uh, it's, it's beginning to move into uh, verse three starts moving into let, let's say that here is the what we've been discussing. This is the beginning, which in the beginning we found the complete thought and concept of God to work. We also found the same and all of the ramifications of what that means. And of course we found God. We will only begin to know God as Father. You know, why hasn't why hasn't God revealed himself as Father up to this point? Well, first of all, you you can talk about what a father is, but you really can't make known the father except by a son. If you've never had a child or a son, you, you're, you're not a father. You, know, you can title yourself a father. Uh, there are uh, ministers uh, of a certain denomination who wear collars. Everybody calls them father. They've never been married. They, uh, they're, they, they're not a father in the truest natural sense of the name. Uh, and so the father could never really be known until the son came. But you could know him as God. And you could know that there was this one called the complete thought concept of God, who was the same, who was the original seed, who was the originator, who was the was eventually to be the all in all, who was the beginning, and later on known to be the beginning and the end, the alpha, the omega, the all in all. So we've been discussing the eternal viewpoint of this relationship between God and the Word and it's the same. And so uh, that is the beginning. This is the beginning, not, not the physical beginning, but this is the beginning as God, the Father, conceived the plan for sons by Christ. And so a family would be formed. Uh, in one viewpoint, it would be a family. In another viewpoint, it would be one. It would be one new man. So not just a family that relates to one another, but as you see it from the new man, a body that is part of one another it must certainly relate, but it isn't just held together by the relationship that it holds. It's held together because it's one. So I'm talking about the body, the new man. It is what it is by virtue of what it is, whereas a family is what it is certainly by what it is, but you know, that can be great part. So that's the beginning. Now we begin verse 3. And verse 3 starts this process that we will call the linear time zone. Because up to this point, up to verse 2, at the end of verse 2, the time is not begun. And we'll show that in verse 3 when we get here. We'll show it. Uh, but now we're about to embark on what God is doing in time in the living. And of course, all that is to come proceeds from here. From this This is where you verse 3. All things were made by Him. Okay. Now, before this time, there was not all, the beginning was not all things being made, the beginning was this establishment of what was going to happen with men between the Father and the Son. Now he creates all things. All things were made by him. And you have to say not just the Word, but certainly the Word. But the relationship between the Father and the Son of the Word, of God and the Word. All things, all things, all, all so when we put an all here, this is not all in Christ, is it? This is not all in Adam. This is all 
things, all created things. So all of those are released into a universe, uh, right down to the minutest atoms, to the greatest galaxies. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. All right. Him is, to understand this, you must be in the beginning. This is not just an explanation of who created what. It's not. This is an explanation of from what sprang all things. What is the source? What is the central, not just focus, because it's, it's not just the central focus, it is the core from which all things find their existence. So we're not just talking about, oh, all, all things are made by him, there's a being called God, he created stuff. Okay, cool, I'm ready to move on to the next verse. If we haven't comprehended from whom uh, uh, what the basis is, then let me tell you something, just real plain. You may study many things within the realm of that, but you've never understood anything. You say, uh huh, there's a lot of people not even born again, and they understand geometry and da 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 No, no, no. They might understand the mechanics of it, but they don't understand from whence it came. They don't understand that that is only a shadow. It's only a shadow. And to see the real would blow them away. You know? Man created a clock that goes, you know, whoa, how smart you are. This is the guy, first guy that invented a clock, you know. How smart you are. What did he base that on? I mean, he based it on the mo movements of this huge universal clock, the universe that everything ticks and moves and upon the, the movements of that. He made an instrument that distracted him. That's all. He didn't even understand the greater of the created things yet. He hasn't even explored all of that. But he thinks he's pretty smart. And really, really and truly, you can create watches, you can do this, you can do that. I mean, you know, radios are nothing more than things that pick up airwaves that have always been. You know what I mean? I mean, there's so many things that we have, we have not really created the thing that is really the happening thing. We have uh, plugged into it. We have found it to be true and created things that help us utilize it or understand it. That's how, uh, I mean, we get into deception. I can see correlation, like, even spiritually, because, you know, we think we had that, like, with the clock. Well, we don't have time. We haven't, you know, we haven't um, even understood time as far as the fullness of time. Right. You know, because um, there's no way that something that small, or, I mean, just, that could come out of our mind could explain something like that. Just the same as there's no way apart from Christ we can have a fullness of you know the life and even attempt to understand it. Right. You know, apart from the Son. Right. You know, and and so that's just. I mean, it's really cool to see that because you think you have stuff and then you're like, well, wait a minute. You know, unless it's Jesus, unless it's you know based on the Word, then we don't have it. Well, and then you have all these different people who understand their part in time being from this point to this point. And so they, somebody utilizes time and somebody doesn't. Now, if you're not, if you haven't really understood this, and you became a doctor and you help people, you haven't properly utilized time. Because this is the reason time exists. And for these purposes, Time will find its fulfillment when this has been wrapped up where Christ is all in all. And then Jesus is going to deliver the kingdom up to the Father that God may be all in all. I mean, in other words, it came out from here and it's going to end up here and the Alpha and Omega is going to be there. And everything else is going to bow its knee one way or the other. Things of heaven, things under the earth, and things on the earth. Things, is that word? Things. Um, and we're all wrapped up in, you know, oh, don't take my, you know, 
all this, we just, we have no clue. And, and the, the, the proof of the way we live is that we have no clue. So, because uh, where, your, where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. And so this is why you find people that spend a lot of, I mean, you know, I mean, time is utilized by people a million different ways. But the Bible didn't say, now utilize your time properly. It, it never said that. It says, redeem. Whoa, now that's a different concept. That's coming from a, that's coming from a, uh, uh, first of all, a redemptive viewpoint. It's coming from a spiritual viewpoint. It's coming from a cost viewpoint. It's, you see what I mean? I mean, when you put that word in there, it has a whole new ramification other than utilize your time well. I know people who, who teach on goals. And the purpose of setting goals is to utilize your time well. So you can be one of these people who really does keep goals and all this kind of stuff and not redeem the time. So, uh, so to me, any anything or all things, any of any of the all things, cannot truly be understood without understanding that it came into existence in relationship in some way because by him and for him and to him and through him are all things. And by him, all things exist. So. So anything that comes out, you know, that which is eternal, that which is eternal will go through or will be recognized and applied and will be whatever and will come out over here. And that which is temporal will be, for a while, it will be, there will be a revamping, then a burning up, and then, a, you know, there will be a, a first a renewing and then a burning up. And then the greater reality of the end, the beginning, will, will come into existence. And everything else will go, you know, we're talking about Noah, you know, and, you know how can you kill all that people? They're already dead. You know, we go, well, how can, you know, I mean, that's not fair. Well, it is too. I mean, God, you know, God did this. God created it. He started it for his purposes and everything. And because we get off of his purposes, and go do our own thing and whatever, you know, we're, you know, God is not to blame. He set it up for one reason. And we did, you know, and he gives us the freedom to do that, to choose him or to go our own way. But he also tells you what the consequences of that will be. But we don't, I don't think we fully realize you know, we, we're still trying to choose right and wrong. We're still, you know, there was right in, right in this garden when he, all things were created, and then there was a garden tree of knowledge of good and evil. So there's good and evil on this one tree, and then life over here, this tree. And uh, uh, we're still evaluating situations and circumstances, and we're still trying to feel our way into the dark. I always am reminded of, I think it's Isaiah, 60 or 66, something there, where it says, you, we grope in the day as in the night. And we are feeling, trying to feel our way, but, he's, but he says this to those. He says, arise, shine, for your light is coming. He didn't say, take heart. I'm going to give you some light. The light is shining, and it is not a matter of getting hold of God or God getting hold of you. It is a matter of believing the true report, the good report, the, the, the report that God had, the testimony of God, that God had concerning his son. Okay? And in, in that testimony, God testifies of the complete thought and concept that he has. Now, we may take that and we say, okay, well, good, here's me. And Jesus loves me, and so just help me. But that's not the testimony of God. The testimony of God is that all, not this all, but all of Adam have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. So all in Adam of the first creation, so he, he brings about a new creation, and the new has a new all to it, 
but that all is one. All in Christ are one. And all have received the one. And the only thing that makes Christianity Christianity isn't, okay, I believe the Ten Commandments. Okay, I believe the church doctrines. Okay, I believe that Jesus died over here and I want to go to hell. That ain't it. You're saved by his life. You know, you're atoned, justified by his work, but you're saved by his life. So all have, all that are truly his have received the one. Okay. So the one becomes preeminent. This is why in the beginning was the word. So if it's not, if it's not beginning everything, if it, the word, I'm not talking about the scriptures, but, but through the scriptures we understand that, but I'm talking about the complete thought and concept. This initiates, this begins, this uh, brings about, this uh, revives the dead of the old. This, you know, I mean, that's what's funny to me is that this life ventured into this realm over here, raised the dead, healed the sick, it touched the infirmities of an old creation, but then it ultimately said, unless this original only one seed falls into the ground and dies, there ain't gonna be any more like me. You'll just be touched, blessed, healed, and have demons cast out of you, but you'll be basically the same. So the cross becomes the answer. So he could have just come down here, set up a kingdom, healed everybody, told everybody how to act good. Would they? No. They couldn't. They couldn't possibly. They can only be self-centered. This creation can only be self-centered. Now, don't misunderstand. That doesn't mean there's not a lot of good people in Adam. Because <laughs> the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is what drives this kingdom. It is the mind. Once, once Adam partook, that started the old creation because he fell into sin. He there was a breach between him and God, and now he's on his own. And his understanding is, because it is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, is he is always evaluating, now, oh, what's this going on? Life is based on good and evil and choices. You know, you can choose evil. You know, but I mean, life nonetheless, you know. And that's why there's a lot of people out there that think, that I talk to people that are really do people wrong. I mean, we've had some people in our drug and alcohol program. We've had some people, not just there, we've had some people in our church. I remember one particular guy that he, he I don't, he knew everybody wrong, and you talk to him and he thinks he's one of the nicest guys. So it doesn't matter where you're from. You know, I talked to pastors, I've had some real questions about <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, so, so Jesus has the one. This one here, we're going to see that when we get just here shortly because he's going, to, he's going to enter into this realm. He created it. But he created it so that this might be fulfilled in us. But man fell. Now he must enter into it to redeem the old. Not, and of course, he doesn't really redeem the old, but he redeems us out of the old. Buys us out. And, uh, uh, and, and, begins to be known once again as the begin, as the complete thought and concept of God. You see what I mean? In other words, it's not just he came to save us from our sins that we committed here. That never, he, this was always the plan from the beginning. Now he's got to redeem us so he can just start talking to us about what's important. Is that crazy or what? But it's the truth, you know. So, but what happens is, we get saved, meaning we receive Jesus, thinking of him in terms of, well, we sinned over here. We don't go back to the beginning. We go to this beginning. All things were created. We go to that beginning. But that, the creation of man is not the beginning. The beginning is right here. You see what I'm saying? And so, but we go back here and we say, well, we were good, and then we were bad, and now we're good. And now we got God with us. And we base that on Emmanuel, which is true, but it's greater than that, you know. I mean, when Emmanuel came, he wasn't just kind of hanging on to Mary's skirts, he was in her. You know, and that's when he was called God with us, you know what I mean? I mean, it is Christ in you, and, and, and 
the, the angel of the Lord said, call that holy thing in you, Jesus. It's Jesus, the Son of God. And so, and God from the very beginning started, you know, and what did she say? Well, I don't know, man. I've never had a relationship before. I don't understand how I can be him in me. I don't see the proof of it. I don't really understand. I really haven't done anything to earn it or to cause it to be. Uh, but I tell you what, be it unto me according to thy word. Be it. Be it. Be it. She started right. She started right. She didn't go through the do thing for seven years and then get a new beginning. You know what I mean? She, she started around. She said, be it unto me according to thy word. And I remember what I got saved when I was reading it. And I read that. And I said, be it unto me according to thy word. And you know what? I didn't even understand all the word. I just said the right thing. And did it. You know what I mean? I didn't even understand what that meant. I just was serious. Look, I don't know. I, I, I was like, how could I know? I just started. I don't know. But... Be it according to me to thy word. And then I kind of went, okay, well, now he's going to set about to do that. Cool. Yeah. And he's, he continues to do. Because without him, you can do nothing. So, so what we do is we find him, but we don't find him as this. We find him as the Savior and the healer and the helper. And so we relate to him apart from him. You see what I'm saying? We relate to him apart from him, not one with him, because you cannot, you know, when you get over here, which is up here in Christ, which is over here, the end. Christ is all that, you know, all of him, he's in all. I, I'm making, it's all the same. See what I'm saying? But I'm putting it in different places. It was here in the beginning before anything was ever created. It's here now. We call it in Christ. And it's going to be over here when they ain't nothing left. The Christ is going to be all in them. You know. And that, they're, you know, that's going to be us. But we're the all that he's in. You see, we're there. But we ain't mentioned by name because our name, we've got a new name. We got married. We got joined to another. We became one. And so then you don't think in terms of, you know, you know, that's like if somebody gets married, you know what I mean, and they spend their whole life thinking in terms of them. And so I can see the wife come home with the groceries, you know, set them back the groceries down, you know, and the husband's kind of going, is that going to be enough to last us all week? She goes, oh, that's usually lasted. Man, I forgot about you. Why don't you have the bed get you some? You know what I mean? And then you got kids and stuff, and you go, and she goes, you know, it's time to go to church. She gets in the car and drives off, and you go, what? What about us? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, it doesn't work that way. I mean, you begin to, to you know, lose your identity and be thought of in terms of a greater. You know? Uh, so, but, but that's even a shadow. You do understand it. That's not even the real. That's only a shadow. At best, that's just a shadow. The real is that this is more real. This oneness is more real. It is more solid. It is more, that's why I closed in the lines there, because there is no whole thing. There is no way to slip out if, if you comprehended the truth. You will abide there. You will abide there. You are there. Now you will abide there. You are there. Because God put you there. God, are you in Christ? You will abide there. So that when opportunities are what you call troubles and trials. But God calls them opportunities. When opportunities come to display what you be, be it unto me according to thy word, you go, oh, oh no, this is, this is, Messing me up. You know, I mean, here you have to imagine sitting in the beginning, sitting in Christ, sitting in the end, because it's all the same. It's steady. It's just steady all the way. It's really one. I mean, I've got a pretension to say Proverbs 3, but it's, you get in there, you get there. You know, you go, oh, oh no! Somebody moved my car! What do I do? 
Somebody stole my life. You know? What do I do? Well, you better forget. You know, the Lord get it, the Lord takes away, and the Lord can get back again if he wants to. Oh no, well there's you know, there's there's people out to kill me. You know. Maybe you get to die and go to be, be with the Lord, or maybe you get an opportunity to minister to those people. Or you get to see miraculous escapes or whatever. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, but, but without God, you go, oh no! You see what I mean? It's as if we're without God. You know, it's like, I'm on my own. I've got to figure out what I'm going to do. And you don't even realize. I mean, Jesus, you know, read the Gospel of John through in light of this. And it'll be interesting because Jesus goes, well, you know, I'm not in the Father's one. And he always says that. You know, oh, the words I speak, they're not mine, they're the Father's. Oh, the works that I do, they're the Father's. You know, he didn't go, well, you know, sometimes I'm okay in the Lord and sometimes I'm not. What? What? Sometimes you're okay in the Lord and sometimes you're not? Huh? You want to explain that to me? I don't understand that. Well, that's because you're just so spiritual, you're no earthly good. Oh, is that the problem? Well, it seems to me like there ain't nothing left but Him. He is all in it all. And the thing is done, we've got this through the cross, so what could you possibly be talking about? Well, you know, don't act like you don't know. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, I do know. Yeah, that all. Oh, you're talking about some of the stuff of the all, but the other all. The all of the old man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, what's the answer? How do I fix this old man stuff? Well, God really did a neat thing. He put a cross right there. And you just go there to die to get in, and he becomes the answer. Well, how would you play that man? How's that going to fix my sin? <laughs> it's not, but it sure fix you. Bring it out all the time. I sprung a leaf! You sure did. Yeah. Now, damn it, Blake. <laughs> the old man spewing out. You know, you're just going. And, and, you know, and so it's almost like people are going, No, 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 get your ass up here and look at this, look at this, you know. You're going, I don't want to. Look at that. Let me alone. I want to look at Jesus. And so you speak of this, and this has no power in this realm. He crucified this. He couldn't, he, he couldn't fix it. I know this is hard to believe. But this, but this is the truth. It's the truth. Jesus came down there. He healed. And some of those same people said, you know, crucify him at the end. He cast out demons. Some of those, most of those same people probably let demons back in. And if they didn't, there's, now they're just atoms without demons. He, he did all this stuff. He did all this. And until he went to the cross and took us to the cross, there wasn't one ounce of hope. No hope. You know. So, you know, he's, you know, I mean, imagine the Father's viewpoint. Imagine the Son's viewpoint. Imagine them. And we're going to God in prayer. We're going, oh, God, you know, uh, uh, you know, now, so this is it. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to have to do it. Really is interested in his son, but I'm really important too. 
for something. I'm not sure. Or, there's, or he's really, you know, he's concerned about abortion or something, you know. I mean, it's terrible for me to say this without giving you explanation, but I'm telling you that God's answer will remedy everything if you just believe it. But it will. And it will. But I can't explain every little nitpicky thing in this old creation. Neither do you. Sometimes I'm trying. I'm just going to tell you there's another reality. And this reality with God, it works. It is in it, settles. So he's looking here. He's seeing this. And we're pulling him over here into this. Okay, is, is God unaware of linear time and what goes on? Okay. Uh, Jesus speaking to the multitudes. And I say, if you ask, and it shall be given. If you seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. For everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If the son shall ask bread of any man of you who is a father, will he give him a stone? Or shall he, if he ask a fish, will he give him for a fish a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Uh, this is in Matthew. That's where I was trying to go to. This is also in Matthew. And, uh, and it says, um, uh, yes, I'm going to read the, the same thing in Matthew just so you can get this. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father, shall your, shall your Father who is in heaven, Give good things to them that ask them. Okay. Good things. Things. Okay. So, God is not unaware of the linear. Now, let us make a distinction. Pray to them. Between the truth as it is in Jesus, the endemic nature, and linear time and what goes on in that time. We should not draw from the old nature to get God to do stuff down here. The old man should be dead, and then we go to the father as a son. If a son shall ask the father concerning this, is he going to give him a, a servant? I don't think so. But what we do is we ignore the father-son relationship. We ignore in whom we are a son. We're just kidding. That's it. I just took this. I didn't take you out. I just hit you. Because you don't need to be seen you. I don't need to be drawn to you up there. You're there. And if I draw you there, then you start thinking you're separate. You are there. You're hid in Christ. When he appears, oh, there I am. Because you appear with him. Because you're in him. But you only know you by him. You don't know you by you anymore. You know you by him. You are known by Christ. And that's a fact. That's the way it is with the Father. You know, if you ain't looking out there, you no, you know, poor so and so. Now, the Holy Spirit is down here in length your time, but I'll tell you, the main work of the Holy Spirit ain't down here trying to, you know, fix your friendships and stuff. And your problems, you know. His main thing is to get you into this reality. Okay? So, so he's aware of things, and he, he is the Father will give a son good things. Because the father knows the motivations of the son. So he didn't say. And when we read those scriptures, we say, okay, if a Christian asks God, well, God will do it. Okay, you just took the heart of the beginning out. You just acted like there is no beginning. Just erase that and just put a God up there somewhere, a big G up there, and us down here. And okay, well, good. I'm going to try this prayer. You said if I ask anything, and it says if I am, because that's kind of the way it is between somebody that's not a child. Oh, God, I need this. I need that. You know what I need. Your word says you know what I need. Give me, give me, give me. And, you know, God, you know, God the Father is, but God's just good in his nature, just by nature. Okay. He, he lets his rain fall on the just and the unjust. I mean, he's just so good, it's just unbelievable. So when he lets his rain fall us and we're on unjust, somehow we equate that we did something right. I cried a little longer that time, I remember. Where I kind of went instead of going, come on, give it to me, God. I went, oh, please. 
You think that that did? I got news for it. Tears don't do it. You may cry, but he ain't gonna move because of your tears. You may, you may do, you, you know what I mean? You may, you may go, oh, oh God, I really, really want you to move. And we think that he's gonna look and go, if you shook two more times, I'd have done it. As if that's the way he views it, you know. Or they're really sincere because they're going, you know, I, this is just a fact. There are a lot of people that do that kind of stuff and they're not sincere. They're trying, they think that by those actions they're going to get God or you or somebody. It's, you know, and that's not the case. Especially not with God. So then they get confused, and this is really funny, and this is when people begin to awaken that they come to the wrong conclusion. After going for so long and not getting any results, finally they go, well, okay, man, here's the deal, here's what I mean. And I just, you know, I, I'm telling you, Lord, I need some help here. And then they walk up and they get the help. And they go, this is weird. I mean, I drug myself through the muck and fire, beat myself and did all this, we didn't move, and I just go, I just kind of get exasperated one day. Okay. I just need some help here. You were sincere for the first time without a bunch of fakey stuff, thinking that this was actually the thing that was going to get it. You just asked. You didn't try to bribe him. You didn't try to fake him out. So he moved. So our conclusion is, well, God just moves by grace, which he does, but we get an attitude with that. What? or something similar to that, instead of realizing that once you quit using all that and you say, I'm, I'm in him, therefore I'm a son, and I come not in my name. I come in. In the name of Jesus. I come in. I'm not, I'm not going, it's me a bit, again, I've been good, so can I have these, you know, I'd like to, you know, have them. These seven things that you throw in, you know, cheese and a few extra fries or something. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. It only works when you come and you say, I'm in him, I'm in the sun. I'm not even asking him about that. I know where I am. And he goes, good cut, really good, Jerry. Yeah, that's what I was saying when I was thinking when you were first started uh, talking about this, that uh, people have a, a completely different understanding of sonship. Uh, their sonship is based on their individuality yes. of being a son, where what you're talking about is no longer you, your individuality as a son, but your sonship, which is Christ. Right. And those are two different things. And the reason why people don't get things or, or have things is because they're relating everything based on their own individual sonship apart from Christ. I was not a son of God. I received the life of Christ that is the only living life to the Father now. And it's called the Son. Now I'm a son. So how is it I became a son in any other way than by the Son? Only as I relate through the Son, by the nature of the Son, in the name of the Son, for the you know what I mean? I mean, in these ways, actually, not even for the Son, because once that nature begins to permeate you, you begin to operate for the Father. Then you're a son, and and you have even act like an individual. But it never was an individual thing. Well, the perversion of that would be of understanding, of understanding the truth of being a son in Christ by applying it to yourself individually. And that, that's rather than a lot. Yeah, rather than. Some people are Christians who are ignorant, thinking, and I don't mean it in a bad way, but they they believe son, they're a son only by, oh, I've been born again, so they're born the son of God. Right. And that's a completely yeah. different thought. Yeah, see, that's uh, not even, that's not really. No, but the, but the perversion is seeing the truth, but applying it to yourself in That's exactly. Um, something else also, like, along with identifying, is that, you know, we hear this term, identifying Christ, a lot around here. And uh, something that the Lord just told me was that, you know, you have to begin to come to understand who Christ is uh, in all of his aspects, even at the beginning. So when you mess right. up, you don't get any start or start over. You 
Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Really that's true. That's true. You know, and, and that's how you have to identify, and that's where the turnaround comes, not by starting over. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and well, I Well, that's good. I was talking to somebody here recently about that. And that's really good because it, it's not a new start like your engine died and you just got a jump start. You know, you go, in a sense, you go back to the beginning, which recognizes that the, I'm in the complete thought and concept of God, which is the same in the Father's heart, which never changes. You talk about a new beginning. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, you walk, you know, and you don't ever walk out of here, but I mean, you begin to enter your linear circumstances. Not you. Not better. Not, oh, you know, I feel a little closer to God because, you know, he, he let me off the hook again. You know. No! You know. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, one thing, you know, we're talking about on the planet circumstances. Uh, we're not trying to say that we're not supposed to live in our planet circumstances. We can't help that. We can't help it, but we're not supposed to get to a point where we're, you know, so spiritual that we're no earthly good. Right. Uh, we do have linear uh, things that, that, uh, that we have to live walk this life out, but we're supposed to walk it out through Christ and by Christ, not according to what the world is in, in its circumstances. Right. And, and that comes through this reality as it works in you when you can draw the fear. Since we're in John, we have drawn from this direction. This reality begins to be applied, and I, I even hate to use the word applied because that means that we have, yeah, we use it. But it's, it's not us, you know, See, and, and the other thing is that it implies that we use it and we figure out all these linear circumstances. And I'm convinced Jesus didn't, nor do I, and I'm just barely anything at all in this, but uh, I'm convinced that Jesus nor Paul got into all these linear circumstances. I mean, what do I do? I really believe that there was a reality that was so powerful that you just walked in and you just, you know what I mean? And, you know, I mean, you know, you get slapped on the cheek. The, the automatic isn't the old man coming back, oh, bam, oh, I'm sorry, heal the Lord, you know what I mean? I mean, the, instead, you know, there is the Spirit of Christ, and uh, uh, that doesn't mean that for us or for me, even at times, I don't have to step back and not react with anything, whatever, my feelings, the old nature, the devil, anything that could possibly be there, I don't, I find it best not to react at anything at any time all the bat. Unless I know it's the Lord. I find it best. Now, I can't say that I always do that, but I find it best to, within myself, something, you know, and this happens all the time. People come up to me and, you know, I get, I get in the face a lot of times. Big, you know. And this is where I get the reputation for being indifferent or not caring. Because I can't react. I, I'm, this is my life, and I'm not sure what his reaction You know what I mean? I, in other words, I know that I shouldn't go, this stupid idiot, you know what I mean? If somebody says, well, I've had it up to here, I'm leaving this church. That may be the Lord. I mean, it may be the Lord. I need to check that out. You know, my first reaction may be, no way, man. A self-preservation type thing or something, you know. Well, I step back and sometimes, and usually the Lord's life is able to flow more freely when you have an open channel. It's funny how that works when you step back and you look at the Lord. And I do this because I'm not my own. It's not my mind. It's not my direction. It's not my life. It's not my words. So, I mean, it's only right for me to kind of step back and you know, and they're still talking about it. You know, my emo emotional. I made my face get, make it real or something. You know what I mean? Or I may feel like, oh, you know, not this or anything. But I'm still, boom, that's the only way I can put it. It's just like I've got this open channel to the Lord. Okay, now what do you think? What is your opinion of this? How's that? What is your viewpoint? What do I need to say? And if you don't give me anything to say, I don't feel obligated to say anything. I just go. And then that's where you get people go, well, you're different. You don't care. Because you go, my God, I'm wrong with you! You know? Say, well, if I could just get a reaction like you care, how about everyday faithful in Jesus? How about the fact that, you know what I mean? I mean, I think that's, you, you would be surprised how much more 
that proves that you care. Then, ah, ah, well, I guess they really do care. They really, they're willing to go all the way to Adam for me. I mean, I, and besides, to do that would violate the principle of reality, the principle of life, the principle that is, the principle that in which I am involved, which says, I can't even just read out here. I am not my own. I'm not with Christ. Boy, what do you think? What do you think? Of the we'll say this. Well, you know, and it, he may not even give me those exact words, but the con but the sense of the situation is, you don't know at this point, Randy. Or, you know, and, and maybe even in a sense, I'm sensing the Holy Spirit say this, though I don't hear words. Well, Randy, because he is my counselor, my guide, my teacher. Well, Randy, at this point, you don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe it is the Lord dealing with them to leave. Maybe they're just reacting, need to have a good fit, and then come back a couple of days later and apologize. Maybe you need to jump in the big middle of them right now. Uh, let's just kind of wait and see, you know what I mean? And so you just kind of hold there and says, well, you know, uh, and if I sense, if I don't, you know, and I don't know, I, I don't know what all goes on. Can't go by my experience, but I can only tell you what goes on in me, you know. And if you, you know, and if you sense the freedom and the and, the, and peace of the Lord, but it's not peace and the feelings. It's this is not contrary to all that I'm in union with. Well, you know, maybe maybe this is the Lord that you need to leave. Not not saying that it is, but maybe it is. Maybe I, I'll just pray with you. Let's just consider it for a couple of days before you make any decisions. No, I made my mind up. I made my mind up. Well, then, if you made your mind up, whether it's the Lord or not the Lord, I can't, you know, unless, unless the Lord says, tell him right now that you're off and you need to turn. And sometimes he does that because sometimes people are ignorant and they just get off. But other times the Lord says, don't tell him that. I've dealt with him enough. I've told him. I've talked to him. And they've made up their mind. They have consistently gone against my dealing, my dealing, my dealing, my dealing. And, and even if you turn them right now, they would only turn because they believe in spiritual authority, not because they're following me. Do you know what I'm saying? And you go, well, I can train you. I can train you for the next 10 years to do everything I tell you. Don't leave. Stay here. Okay. But they're not. They're still not plugged into the Lord. You know what I mean? And it might even be better off for them if they get off. And besides, I mean, they were off, they were off, they were off, they were off. If they leave, they're no further off than they were the last seven times when God spoke to them. And they turned from what they said. See, we always see the final manifestation, the break is the almighty big end of the ball of wax. Oh my God, this is terrible. That ain't terrible. That is nothing more than a physical manifestation of something that's been going on over and over and over again. I mean, it was just as terrible that when they said, you know, the Lord said, go help that person, and they said, they're like this. It's the same thing. It's the same deal. They've, they've trained themselves to go against the Lord, and one day when the chips are down, they're going to just, you know, they'll say no against that. They'll walk up and say, well, you know, no about this. It's just the truth. So, you know, this believing is no greater than any little step of rebellion or anything along the way. The only deal is, is that it's piled up and they got used to it and they got used to it until it's easy to go, I'm out of here. And you go, yeah, you are. You've been out. And people say, oh, this is terrible when I am. And you go, didn't you see it coming? In fact, you don't, that's not even the proper words. Didn't you see it coming? Really isn't the proper words. Didn't you see it? It's just a matter of time for it manifested. What are you so shocked about? You know? Well, I knew that, uh, but, but it's, once again, it's that we live in the linear, and so it's the big blow up that we all drink. Hello, anybody? It's the big blow up we all drink. I tell you what, you want to learn to live spiritual, forget the big blow up. That's not more than a manifestation. It's too late by that anyway. Now, when I say it's too late, it's never done in the blow. They can leave and you know, the Lord can deal with them. But I mean, as far as the big blow up is nothing. It's, it's nothing. It's just the final thing. And in most cases, what I've found the big blow up to be is the final putting to rest of something that you've been wrestling with for a long time anyway. 
I mean, it was more, it, I'm telling you from my viewpoint, maybe, but for me, it's harder to bear this and to watch that over and over and over again. It's just like, oh, you know, than to have it just explode and say, okay, well, I'm more good. At least they're finally making a decision and they're not fooling themselves or something. You know what I'm saying? But, but we're all afraid of the big blow up, and the big blow up is nothing more than a whole bunch of little steps lead to a big step. And, you know, just we just train on, we are training on, everybody here is in training, and some of you are training yourself, some of you the Holy Spirit's training. You know, I was talking to somebody just recently about this, and it's, it's an important point. Um, you, you know, we live down here in these linear circumstances, and
just yelling at Carlos, yeah! work every day 
And I, you know, and this this may surprise some, but this is the first time I've shared this. Oh, I remember this for the first time, so it be good. You know why I've said shared this before? Because it's in sermon notes I keep right here, and as I get to this page, it always reminds me of this sermon in my preach. Not hardly. <laughs> Not hardly. It's there because it's right here, and I know what happens every day. Every day. You, you don't think the devil tries to hit me every day? You don't think junk happens? You don't think there's a load that comes? You don't think that there's surprises? You know? I've learned that the linear existence is going to be full of surprises, and that we as humans don't like surprises. Okay? I, I figured that out. Okay? So I figured, okay, now I can just figure that much and go, okay. Well, I don't know it, and we don't like it, and I get up to live with it. Or I can go, so, every time a surprise happens, I'm going to automatically step back and go, okay, Lord, what do you think? Sometimes the answer's right away. Sometimes it doesn't. And I've had people go, ah, blah, 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 blah. what do you think? And I go, man, I don't know. Let's just pray about it. I just pray the basics. They don't know what they Oh, I've had people tell me. I'm just going to pray the basics. I need that. Oh, that's out. <laughs> well, that is because it's just you know, the word of God is still true. Whether you know specifically how to deal with that or not. But I, but there's, but there's two things that happen. They're looking to me for an answer, and I'm looking to make sure that Randy don't come out, or the devil, or the old man. I'm okay. I'll clump them all together. Randy is as bad as the devil. Man. In that sense, I mean, ultimately, Randy's saved with Jesus. Okay, but I mean, I'm not just trying to show off Randy. I know when Randy shows up, and I know that I'm not going to go to hell if it's just it's not a sin or the old, you know. But I like Jesus a lot more. Is that okay? I like it when he shows up a lot more. So I saw a couple of hands. Oh, we're so far back there that we don't have room. Yeah. No, this explains it all. Look at this. Yes.
doesn't come after it is over. The truth of being free in uh, Christ Jesus comes when you're still bound. And uh, in a sense, guys, in Romans 8, the second verse, for the law of the spirit of the of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You know, that, you know that, that's a principle. You still might have things that need to be walked out, but the principle of that is already so. And it sets you free. It sets the walk. It's not something that is at the end of your life. And so one day, when you die, the spirit of life makes you free. It's, it's something but it's that big deal we're looking for. Yeah, and it's at the beginning of the life. It's it's just, revelation of Christ. It's, it's right after uh, Romans 7, when he was just really in the middle of all of this, that he realized that it's Christ that can say that had saved the free. That had, and he realized who he already was, was, and he just began to walk in the spirit of that reality. But then again, it's not, uh, it, you know, our words are so lame when it comes to making these explanations of who we are in Christ because that right. that show you know that brings us back to being somebody in Christ. Right, right. that's Christ. exactly right. It, it, a person can take that. I mean I've said that for years and never taken that wrong. Yeah. Because when you talk who in Christ, there's only one who. And I call him the one. I call him the all. So I'm not. But somebody else who is still thinking in terms of themselves and never will separate or never will join themselves coming to union with Christ to know who I am in Christ as if when you walk in the Henry's Masons and he puts all this stuff on you now you're a better thing because Yeah, well Sam Sam was one of those that always uh took the separate before word that was separate from Christ. And well, so as a result of uh, of seeing that perversion of being separate from Christ now it's such a good thing in my life to realize that I make those distinctions. But see, the distinction really is the difference between the carnal mind and the that is the, That's what that's all about. Because the carnal mind is separate and lives in circumstances in the essential. And a mind that is being renewed begins to believe this above that. And at first there's a major war, but then there is a submission or a yielding, a letting that's being. No, that's something that we want to understand too is that, uh, that uh, there has to be a walk by faith before. I mean, you have to go through those things. You have to, you have to see it by faith. You have to see it in reality. You have to make it. You have to go through that by faith. You have to look for it. Well, the truth is, it always has to be by faith. If it just comes to a juncture where it begins to manifest a lot more, and, but you can't go by manifestation because that's not by what you see. Well, that's one of those things where it's saying that when you step out by faith, the devil hits you. And uh, um, sometimes the first reaction to the kid is, this thing told us must not be really working. I always, I, so I think I admit it, which I've never, not, maybe, maybe I did it, I don't remember anybody else, but what I call the latest confirmation. He always seemed to leave me alone when I wasn't really doing too good, you know, when I was really with him. You know, it always seemed to really hit me harder when, you know, when I seemed to step out or whatever. So I always took it as what I call confirmation that I, not that I'm doing bad, but actually that I'm doing something right. And, and he may even have ground to hit me that he wouldn't have because I'm doing something wrong. But the fact that he would hit me says I'm doing something right. The ground on which he hit me may say, I need to learn what this is, figure it out. But I'm still going on with the Lord. So you're just all, you know, all of you know that. You know, and, you know, I mean, that's why people, that's why I've seen people be hit and go back to serving the devil and quit serving God because they go to lose the Lord. You know, and what happens when, when they go back to serve the devil? They don't get hit as much. Not by the devil. They get hit by the world or they begin to feel that separateness from God and, you know, those things.
because we believe we are God, but He is, that we want to, in our daily walk, when we are faced with circumstances, say, no, I'm not. These reactions may be justified in me because I have a right, but, I, but I'm not going by my rights. I'm going by Christ. And Jesus will suffer the just and the unjust, even if they're the ones who deserve it. I will suffer glad because it is my nature, because I'm going to do what they deserve. Father, help us to realize that the outward of this really is not what it is at all. It is nothing more than an extension of what we've already held to be true, if we truly held it in the right way. But it is already just an extension of that. And we just we are just determined that we will not deny the truth in our daily circumstances. Claim it in our spirit. We just say no, oh, the truth is the truth. Father, help us to, to awaken 